How to bring more light into the bathroom without windows. In brief, think over artificial lighting and mirrors use wall surface as light reflecting elements. See in the video how to do that. If you're inspired by the ideas for interior from the video, you can purchase the furniture and accessories you liked from the links in the pinned comment. Tip 1. Focus on artificial lighting. Confined space without windows may be very uncomfortable. That's why the main task of the bathroom interior design is to compensate for the absolute lack of daylight. You'd better replace a single lamp on the ceiling with built-in spotlights, which give more uniform, soft light. This is a versatile option that will be suitable for bathrooms of any size. Install additional wall lights on either side of the mirror or hang a cabinet with mirror doors and built-in lamps over the sink. To visually expand the space, you can add LED lights at the base of the bathtub and the cabinet under the sink. The best option is to choose either neutral or warm white light. It is pleasant for the eyes, emphasizes highlighted details or bright wall colors. On the contrary, cold light deepens shadows, distorts natural colors and eats up warm shades. Tip 2. Expand the space. You don't need any rearrangements for that, just use simple techniques. Hang mirrors, a standard one above the sink and a few in vintage frames on the opposite wall. The light playing in the reflection will expand even a small bathroom. Ceramic tiles with a glossy surface, glass walls of a shower cabin or a satin glitter of wallpaper will produce the same effect. You can use the latter for covering the walls not adjacent to the bathtub and sink. You can turn one wall into a large mirror. It will be non-functional, but this technique will help to visually expand the walls to correct the ill-considered layout. If the room is tiny, one large mirror will be enough. Otherwise, you risk getting the opposite effect. Tip 3. Make color accents. Don't strive to combine multiple shades. Soon, you will begin to feel irritated with this color mixture. If you want to add bright colors to the bathroom interior, you should limit yourself to one contrasting wall. 
Here, design options may be something like the following. The first way is to cover the walls with glass mosaics, alternating different colors to get a pattern or laying tiles chaotically. The second one is to paint the walls in contrasting colors, preferably with opaque paints. Such technique is often used if the rest of the walls are covered with light, glossy tiles. The third option is wallpaper with a geometric pattern. Black and white pattern looks especially spectacular. If you don't want to experiment and prefer classical designs, you can use paintings under glass or vinyl posters as color accents. They will make the interior personalized and create a special mood. What to do if the room is too large? In brief, divide the space into functional zones, combine flooring materials, work with colors. See in the video how to do that. If you decide to implement ideas from the video in your apartment, you can purchase the furniture and accessories you liked from the links in the pinned comment. Tip 1. Divide the space into zones. Those who have small apartments are unlikely to appreciate complaints about excessive space size. But to tell the truth, in both cases it's quite difficult to choose finishing and furniture. When designing a tiny room, the main task is to squeeze in all the necessary things. But when arranging a large room, it is to divide the space into functional zones. Portable screens, curtains mounted on ceiling rods, and even large live house plants will help divide the space. Large furniture can also be used as partitions. Here are three examples of how you can do it. Use a closet or dresser to stake out a small study. The cabinet's unattractive back can be disguised with wallpaper, painted or covered with bright posters or pictures in colored frames. Arrange an open shelf, put books on it and complement it with a cozy armchair. You'll get a mini library. If you need a playroom for your child, replace books with boxes of toys and a chair with a soft mat. Turn the sofa or armchairs their backs to the room and complement them with a low coffee table. Your cozy sitting area is ready. Don't try to fill all the available space. Your room shouldn't look like a furniture warehouse with narrow passages. Putting cabinets and sofas along the walls is a bad solution either. The center of the room will look empty and the interior in general will seem uncomfortable.
Tip 2. Combine flooring materials. This simple method will help to visually divide the space. Feel free to combine laminate, parquet and floor tiles of the same color range or contrasting shades. You should create a smooth division line, a gradual transition from one material to another. Clear, straight lines will divide the floor into separate, unrelated parts. A carpet will be a great approach to visually separating the sitting area from the rest of the room. Put a low table, a couple of armchairs or a corner sofa on it. Don't worry if you can't find a carpet of the right size. Join two small carpets with an adhesive tape underneath or buy a carpet flooring of a suitable color. Tip 3. Work with color. The good thing about large rooms is that they give their owners almost unlimited freedom of wall design. Use different colors to visually divide particular areas or combine shades of the same color range. But don't overdo it. The interior of one room can accommodate no more than three colors. If you decide on bright walls, you should choose flooring, upholstery and textiles of either neutral or muted bleached colors. They will balance the act of finishing and make the space cozy.
My home is unwelcoming. How can I fix that? In brief, don't try to copy the interior you liked in a magazine. Customize it and remember that it is personal things that make your home cozy. See more in the video. If the ideas from the video inspire you to change something, you can purchase the furniture and accessories you liked from the links in the pinned comment. Tip 1. Don't turn your home into a catalogue picture. Interiors where every item has its own, well-thought-out place are undoubtedly impressive. But often, designers fail to make the space cozy. Therefore, when you take a live look at such interiors, you see that they are devoid of individuality, uninhabitable. On the contrary, projects that seem to have minor imperfections or even mistakes become the most successful. A picture on the wall, standing out from the overall style, bits and kits left out on the table, as if by chance, in harmonious tableware, all this stuff makes a house really cozy. Keep a sense of proportion. Style shouldn't be more important than utility, and vice versa. A cluttered room with every free shelf being stuffed with figurines and bright vases looks just as uncomfortable as a half-empty one. A simple example. A coffee table in the living room is always so perfectly clean that it looks bare. But if you put a pot with flowers or a stack of your favorite books on it, it will come to life. Thus, you'll keep it functional and make the room more cozy. But if you arrange carefully selected items on the same table, which perfectly match the overall design, you'll get just a beautiful picture, which will look great in the photo. But nothing more. You can forget about its utility. You won't even dare to put a cup of coffee on it, so as to not accidentally splash the drink on all this beauty. Tip 2. Add cute bits and kits. A cozy interior reflects the owner's habits and character. Sometimes it's enough to add things that mean something to you to transform the space. Don't worry if they don't match the overall design. Here are a few simple examples. Don't rush to remove stupid magnets you brought from vacation from the fridge. They won't ruin the overall kitchen style, but will remind you about the sunny days. Put an old granny's figurine or a carved casket to the fore. This stuff often creates that very coziness. Add handmade items. These can be a soft toy, a poster with your favorite quote, or a panel that you and your child made from seashells you brought from the sea. Remember, it is things with a story that create a homely feeling, not decorative items, even the carefully chosen ones that match style, shape, and color.
Tip 3. Consider all the aspects. Tactile sensation and sense influence perception as well. Knitted plates, textured bedspreads and soft floor mats will make even an austere, minimalist interior warm and cozy. Objects made of natural wood will produce a similar effect, from furniture to picture and photo frames. Scented candles or sticks will help to create an atmosphere in the house. These accessories are available in a huge range. You can even buy candles with a freshly baked bread aroma. Due to their attractive design, such interior candles will become another decoration. How to furnish a room from scratch In brief, determine the basic needs, plan the space and sketch a rough plan of large furniture arrangement before you buy something. See a simpler way to do that in the video. If the ideas from the video inspire you to change something, you can purchase the furniture and accessories you liked from the links in the pinned comment. Step 1. Determine the needs it's true that people rarely have no furniture at all when they move into an apartment. When moving, a common problem is to find space for a huge old closet or a massive sofa in a new room. But if you need to furnish a room from scratch, the problem of what to buy and where to put it is no less relevant. To make the task simpler, assess the space, the room layout and think what large furniture you need here. Later, as situations demand, you can complement that minimum set with shelves, console tables and other small items. Step 2. Plan the space To make it easier to imagine how the furniture will finally look in its place, it will be a good idea to draw a scaled scheme. For this, just take a squared sheet of paper, draw a rectangle and schematically show the location of windows, doors and niches. After that, indicate where you'll put a sofa, chairs, a closet or a bed. Consider a few basic rules when drawing up a plan. First, don't try to cut corners by placing the furniture along the wall. The room will be uncomfortable and its center will remain empty. 
small rooms, where it's simply impossible to arrange the furniture otherwise, can be an exception. Second, don't forget to leave free space between the objects. People will hardly want to keep hitting a corner of a dresser every time they leave the room, or maneuver between a sofa and a coffee table to get to the kitchen. Third, get the proportions right. The smaller the room, the more compact the furniture should be, and vice versa. A sofa with large armrests and back will eat up all the space in a studio apartment, and a tiny sofa will look out of place in a large living room. Once you've decided where to put the main furniture, you can think about accents. Will a console table fit in the living room? Is there enough space for a dressing table in the bedroom? Can you squeeze a small sofa for relaxation in the study? Step 3. Think over the arrangement scheme. Assess the potential of the room once again. A window or a fireplace are the focal points, next to which you can arrange a seating area. Plan seats so that it's comfortable to chat, but you and your guests don't sit on top of one another. If there is no window or fireplace, a TV can become a focal point or an author's unusual painting, an open cabinet with your china collection, or a wooden bookshelf. There are many options. The furniture arranged at an angle or moved to the center of the room can bring life into the space. You shouldn't invent any queerish schemes. For example, a sofa and chair standing back to back will look strange at least. This solution is appropriate only if you plan to divide the room into zones. How to make a bathroom cozy In brief, make the room cozy with multi-level lighting, restrained color palette and spectacular decoration. And don't forget closed storage systems. See in the video how to do that. If you are inspired by the ideas for interior from the video, you can purchase the furniture and accessories you liked from the links in the pinned comment. Is it possible to turn a typical bathroom in an ordinary apartment into a cozy place to relax and rest? Of course, if you use your imagination. 
Furthermore, you can find finishing materials to suit every pocket. Tip 1. Choose tiles, hide pipes. If you want your bathroom to look like one in a luxury hotel, cover the walls with monochrome tiles of warm shades or with tiles with discrete patterns. It looks equally good both in large and tiny rooms. Besides, you can find very affordable options. Plastic pipes in plain sight will spoil the entire design, no matter what tiles will be on the walls. Therefore, you should hide them under the finish. Just don't forget to plan the place for faucets in advance, so that you can easily connect them. Tip 2. Use multi-level lightning. If you want to make the atmosphere in the bathroom really relaxing, install a few inbuilt ceiling lights instead of one central lamp. In the bath and shower zones, you can add dimmable lamps or even colorful sources of light. Don't forget about lights by the mirror. You'd better choose rotary ones. Choose their design depending on the overall style. If it's technically possible, make a separate switch for each source of light. Thus, you will be able to alter the lighting scenarios depending on your mood. However, it makes sense only in large rooms. Tip 3. Think over storage systems, add textured elements. Do you know what can ruin all your efforts to decorate the bathroom? Packs of toilet paper, boxes of wash powder and other household items left on open shelves. You need these things, but they don't make the interior look better. Various bottles, plastic packs of hair care products or shower gel standing on the bathroom edges can also spoil the overall impression. Here are a few ideas to help you organize storage systems properly. Use the space under the sink. 
buy a cabinet with drawers or doors. Hide your household chemicals, wash powder and all other things that you don't want to leave in plain sight. Buy a few identical plastic or ceramic bottles with dispensers and pour liquid soap and shampoo into them. They look much nicer than standard packs. If you want to put an open shelf in the bathroom, use wicker baskets to store the necessary stuff. Thus, it will be easier to keep order on the shelves, and the bathroom will generally look much neater. As for the textured elements, you shouldn't overload the space. Put a woven rack on the floor, hang fluffy towels on the hooks, it will be quite enough. How to diversify a neutral tinted interior In brief, mix a few colors, stress accents, add textured textiles and use natural materials. Watch the video for details. If you decide to implement ideas from the video in your apartment, you can purchase the furniture and accessories you liked from the links in the pinned comment. Tip 1. Select finishing colors and materials. A neutral interior doesn't necessarily mean boring. Restrained shades make the atmosphere relaxed, which will be suitable for the bedroom or study. Pure white can act as a perfect backdrop for furniture and accessories, but only if you use it in small increments. It won't do any good if you paint all the walls and ceiling in bright white. It looks too strict and cold. However, reduced grey-brown shades will look great with a ceiling painted white or wooden elements. And light grey is in harmony with ivory color. If you think that you need more contrasting colors, then you can do the following. Option 1. Choose one wall for the accent and cover it with wallpaper with discrete graphic ornaments that are slightly darker than the main color of the walls. Option 2. Lay patterned tiles on the floor, but make sure that the following colors are in harmony with the shades in the overall design. Option 3. Cover the elements of natural wood with a dark stain, chocolate tint or black paint. These may include the window and door frames. This method looks nice if you choose light grey as the main color. Don't be afraid to experiment with combinations of shades. The neutral gamut is so good that it's easy to work with.
Tip 2. Add textured materials. Wooden furniture and objects made of metal or natural stone combined with textured textiles will give the volume and a feeling of coziness you want. Lay a sheepskin rug or a woolen one with a simple pattern rug on the floor and hang line and curtains on the windows. Wicker furniture is back in fashion and has migrated from covered verandas to living rooms. With their simple shades and lightweight look, such items will also help to diversify a neutral design. Wicker baskets that can be used to store small items will produce a similar effect. Live potted plants will bring life into the restrained color palette and harmoniously fit into the interior, but at the same time they won't overload the space and won't attract too much attention. Put them directly on the floor or use metal or wooden stands. And yes, this is that very case when macrame flower pots won't look strange. Tip 3. Stress accents. If you don't like bright colors, use shades of gray, brown and black. Hang posters and monochrome posters on the wall. Black and white photos and frames is also a classic interior design technique. You can also use small paintings or even mirrors. You don't have to choose ones of the same size and shape. Select one wall and arrange them so that they make a kind of a panel picture. Textiles can also act as accents. Decorative cushions with monochrome covers, whose shade matches the wallpaper on the wall, or with a pattern that repeats the floor tiles pattern. Or soft bedspreads of restrained dark grey or warm chocolate shades. Are accent walls worth it? In brief, think over the entire interior. Make the accent wall coincide with the rest of the design details in color. Use color accents to correct the space geometry. Watch the video for details.
If you decide to implement ideas from the video in your apartment, you can purchase the furniture and accessories you liked from the links in the pinned comment. At one point, accent walls were super popular. Designers widely used this technique in their projects, and apartment owners did their best to cover any protruding parts of the wall with contrasting wallpaper. Today, accent walls are no longer as popular as they used to be, but it's too early to say farewell to them. Tip 1. Don't take the word accent literally. The goal of an accent wall is to improve the general perception of your interior or probably to correct shortcomings of the layout. To unite the decoration, furniture and accessories into a single whole, without becoming a separate design object that attracts all the attention. Thus, don't try to simply paint one of the walls a contrasting color. All you'll get is a strange eye-catching spot, which will finally become irritating. Indeed, the accent wall doesn't have to be bright. So, if you aren't sure that you can organically integrate bright colors into your interior, use wallpaper with a muted pattern or graphic ornament. This is a perfect solution for small rooms. You can use tiles, wooden panels or clapboard instead of wallpaper. Tip 2. Use different colors for room zoning. Accent walls can be used as an element of visual zoning of large, multifunctional rooms. But make sure that the colors and the pattern of the wallpaper correlate with the rest of the interior elements. If you want something unusual but are too scared to experiment, paint the end wall or the space surrounding a window a contrasting color. This decision minimizes the risk of making a mistake and keep the purpose of each zone in mind. For example, wallpaper with a large geometric pattern will be suitable for a conventional living room, and bright shades are appropriate for the children's room. To separate the sleeping area, you should decide on wallpaper with a medium-sized pattern, neutral paint or tile of the same color palette.
Step 3. Use accents to hide layout drawbacks. In their projects, designers usually make accents on beams or projections of the wall. But keep in mind that this solution requires certain knowledge. Otherwise, you risk getting a strange combination with the accent wall existing independently from the interior. If you have a niche in your room and you want to attract attention to it, paint the walls on the both sides of the opening a contrasting color. On the contrary, if you want to disguise it, decide on the contrasting central zone. You will get an interesting illusion, as if you are looking at a single space. The walls on the both sides of the niche will simply merge with the main wall decoration. This technique looks impressive and will help to make the space look visually wider. You can make a wagon room more spacious if you paint the end walls a dark color, or cover them with wallpaper with a large white pattern. The lighter side walls will look shorter, and the room will no longer resemble a tunnel. Thanks for watching. Check out other videos with the ideas for interior and click the bell button to stay in touch. You will find the links to the furniture and accessories you liked below the video. Let your home be cozy and embrace the changes.